This mass is offered as thanksgiving to Saint Jude and thanksgiving to Saint Jude on the occasion of the birthday of Jude de Souza. During this Eucharist, we pray for all our devotees who have been faithfully participating in this nine days novenas as we take the entrance hymn. We are very happy to welcome Bishop John Rodericks to celebrate this Eucharist with us for us. Also, we have a galaxy of priests come from different corners for this welcome for the Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Thank you for your words of welcome. I'm indeed happy to be here and celebrate this feast mass of St. Jude. You have prepared yourselves with the novena. And today, as we just sang, we celebrate with joy God's blessings through the intercession of St. Jude. Together with all the apostles, Jude and the apostles are those who are our closest connection to Jesus. They were the ones who witnessed Jesus' ministry. They saw his miracles. They heard his message. They believed in what he called them to. And so they lived with Jesus and he sent them out to continue his mission. They communicated the faith to others, and down the centuries, that faith has come to us. And so we give thanks to God for the apostles and for their zeal and dedication and love for Christ. During the lockdown, we were not able to participate fully in the Eucharist. We are happy that just a few weeks ago, we are able now to gather together, of course, obviously still following all the guidelines. We want to worship. We want to praise God. We want to come together as a community. We are united in a bond of love as all disciples, as devotees of St. Jude. And so we thank God for our intercessor and we pray that we grow in the love of God.
Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us give praise to God in the words of the Gloria. Let us pray. O God, who by the blessed apostles have brought us to knowledge, 
to acknowledge your name graciously grant through the intercession of saints Simon and Jude that the church may constantly grow by increase of the peoples who believe in you through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit god forever and ever amen, amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into one holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Our response will be, their sound goes forth through all the earth. Kindly repeat. Their, their sound, sound goes forth through all the earth. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament proclaims the work of his hands. Day unto day conveys the message, and night unto night imparts the knowledge. Our response? That the sound goes forth through all the earth. No speech, no word, whose voice goes unheeded. Their sound goes forth through all the earth. Their message to the utmost bounds of the world. Our response? Their sound, sound goes forth through all the earth. earth. Finally, rise. Praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus went out into the hills to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. When day came, he summoned his disciples and picked out twelve of them. He called them apostles. Simon, whom he called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He then came down with them and stopped at a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering of his disciples with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. People tormented by unclean spirits were also cured and everyone in the crowd was trying to touch him because power came out of him that cured them all. Praise, praise, Praise be to Jesus, now and evermore. Once again. Praise, praise, praise be to Jesus, now and evermore. Do the words 
of the gospel may our sins be washed away. We honor today these two saints, Simon and Jude, two apostles whom we know very little about. We just say a word about Simon and then we shall focus on Saint Jude. Simon is referred to as the Zealot. The Zealots were a group or a party of people who were full of zeal and enthusiasm for the law. They wanted to keep the law faithfully and so they were zealous and enthusiastic about doing that. Simon belonged to that group and therefore had this name. That's all we know about Simon and about Jude. He's called the son of James in the gospel that we just heard of Luke and in the Acts of the Apostles and in Matthew and Mark he's referred to as Thaddeus. That's what we have about St. Jude. As we celebrate this feast, what then can we look to from our patron, St. Jude? I'd like to highlight two characteristics of his from which we can draw for ourselves and also keep in mind whenever we seek his intercession. Firstly, St. Jude's closeness to Christ. As we heard, the apostles were called by name. Who is it that we call by name? Only someone whom we are familiar with. Someone who is very close to us. Otherwise, we will always use a title to refer to that person. We don't know the person. We speak of a general term to refer to that person. But someone who's close to us, we can call by name. And God calls the apostles by name. To follow him. He invites them to be with him, to learn from him, and then he sends them out. Each one of us is called by name by God. And that happens at the time of our baptism, when we are given that name by our parents, the godparents, and then that becomes our name by which we belong to the church. God calls us by name. How wonderful it is to say that God is one who wants to be close to us, who is familiar with us, who knows what happens to us, and therefore he calls us by name. God relates to us personally. In the first reading, St. Paul tells the Ephesians, you are no longer strangers, you are no longer aliens, but you are members of the house of God. You are part of God's family. And therefore, God calls you by name. And what is applicable to the Ephesians is applicable to every one of us who has faith in Jesus. That we are called by name by God. We are precious in his sight. And therefore, this closeness to God that begins with the apostles and has been handed on to us is something that we treasure. We must always feel close to God. We must experience God's closeness to us at every moment, even in times of difficulty. And surely during the pandemic, while we may have felt far away from people, isolated and cut off, we could not meet, God did not abandon us. God was very close to us. And he continues to do so. Jude, or Judas, as his name originally was, was not invoked initially for intercession or not sought to guide people, probably because of the name which was associated with Judas Iscariot. And so slowly in, over the years, in the tradition of the church, Jude was called upon or his intercession was sought only as a last resort. Finally, try Saint Jude. 
and so he began to be called the patron of hopeless cases yes anyone who seems to have lost hope can turn to saint jude and maybe we in our own situations have done that when there seemed to be no way out we called upon saint jude to help us but we are not always in hopeless situations yes maybe we do go through these ups and downs and some moments we may seem to be down for a very long time but the lord lifts us up and yet we continue to seek the intercession of saint jude he helped us in those moments of hopelessness but he helps us at all times and therefore as we pray today and seek his intercession we can confidently say that he is the patron of all devotees and that is what you have been reflecting on during this novena he is the patron of families he is the patron of those who are sick he is the patron of those who want who are seeking justice he is the patron of those who want courage from the lord he is the patron of those who may be needing need healing and deliverance in every situation we can call upon the intercession of saint jude because of his closeness to christ however as we call upon him we must remember that god should not be our last resort when everything else seems to have failed then we turn to god sometimes we find ourselves in a difficult situation maybe because of external factors or sometimes it could be because of our own wrong doing in different areas of our life with regard to our health or our job or relationships or our flat or our housing whatever that problem is or maybe a problem that we ourselves created and then we try to find a solution we ask advice from others we tell them to use their human skills their negotiations please talk to so and so and try to help me out of this program of this problem then we may even try to get other ways and sometimes we end up doing something wrong to get ourselves out of that difficult situation we may say someone may tell us well you know the cause of this problem is that person try to bring that person down and your problem will be solved and maybe at times we have resorted to that and then we even resort maybe at times to superstitious practices and black magic and we say maybe this will help and then when nothing seems to work we come to god as a last resort saint jude reminds us that that should never be rather than being our last resort god should be our main stay our rock our refuge the one to whom we cling because he is our source of life he is the source of love and he will never abandon us that is what saint jude invites us to live to hope for and to believe and so we ask as we invoke saint jude for this grace that we may have that same closeness to christ trusting him in all circumstances not going to him as a last resort but rather believing that god is our mainstay our rock the foundation that firm footing on which our lives are built god wants us to enjoy the good things he gives us but sometimes we forget him and then only when we face a challenge or a difficulty or a crisis we then begin to think of god all that we are comes from god all that he gives us are gifts of his and we thank the lord for his gifts and we cling to him because he is our mainstay and this is probably one of the lessons that the pandemic has taught us we thought everything was going fine our human progress and technological advances could take us in different places advance in medical technology was so great and then suddenly we found ourselves here in a situation where there was no way out and we turned to god we turned to him with all our hearts crying out to him help us in this situation yes we have learned that god is our mainstay he is the one who never abandons us may we like saint jude be close to the lord may we experience his nearness in our hearts in our minds in our whole being and trust him completely a second insight that we can draw from saint jude 
is that we are called to contribute to the growth and the life of the church. That is what each of the apostles did. Jesus called them to himself. They experienced his life. And then Jesus sends them out. That is the meaning of an apostle. One who is sent out. And they went out to establish churches in various places. They went out to build up the church, to further the kingdom of God. That is what every apostle did with his life and even by dying, by offering themselves in service of others, by offering their lives to God. And so we seek also, like St. Jude, to contribute to the good of the church. They became foundations, as St. Paul tells us, of the church with Christ the cornerstone. And in the same first reading, St. Paul tells us that we are part of that building that the apostles have built, a spiritual building. And we are part, like living stones, we are called to be temples of the Holy Spirit. And through our lives, we must manifest to others that God dwells within us. God has chosen to reside in us. God has made his home in our lives. And so we are to contribute to the building up of the church. Whenever we work together, when we collaborate, maybe in our parishes, in our small Christian communities, in our associations, when there is a common project in mind, everyone rallies together, everyone comes together and says, yes, we can do this. And this happened once again during the time of the pandemic, when people in parishes or in neighborhoods or in small Christian communities said, here are people who are suffering, let us do something for them. And even putting them all, their own selves at risk, they went out to help those who were in need those who were struggling in the time of the pandemic. We experience this at various other times, when we organize spiritual programs, when we join in a parish project, in some common activity, and we feel, yes, that bond of love is so strong among all of us as believers. We like to be connected. We need to share our faith. We need to grow in communion, in oneness, in unity. And Pope Francis has been reminding us about this, and particularly now, as we begin this preparation for the Synod, where he tells us that we are walking together. Jesus is the way, and we are walking that way together. We are co-pilgrims. We are travelers on the way. And then St. Jude and the celebration of the feast reminds us that it is not just us who gather together walking on that journey, but all of us, the whole church here on earth, and the saints, who are in communion with us, who are in this bond of love, and therefore we seek their intercession, and therefore they help us in our journey through their prayers. And we can be confident of their help because the saints are in perfect communion with God. They have completed their earthly journey, they are one with Christ, and therefore they know the mind and the heart of God, and therefore they can intercede for us for what is right in the eyes of God. While we may place our petitions and say, this is what I want, the saints know what God wants of us. And they intercede, therefore, according to the mind of Christ. And therefore, through their prayer, the church is built up. Through their prayer, we are growing as disciples, as temples of the Holy Spirit. We are united in Christ. We are members of the body of Christ, and therefore we are called to share each other's joys and pains. The gospel tells us that Jesus preaches and heals, and as he went from town to town, from village to village, power goes forth from his body. That same power of Jesus goes forth through the church. When the sacraments are celebrated, when we in turn become like Jude and the other apostles, filled with zeal and want to share the good news with others. When we continue the mission of Jesus, power is going through us to others. The power of Jesus is at work in us. And so we continue to pray that we will be better and better disciples. As devotees of Saint Jude Thaddeus, who sought to live in closeness to Christ, and to build up the kingdom of God, to further the church, we ask for this grace. Firstly, 
that we grow in our nearness and closeness to Christ just as St Jude was because God calls us by name that we give God the first place that we don't come to him only as a last at the end when we find ourselves in a hopeless situation in joys and sorrows we will come to the lord because he is our rock and refuge and secondly we pray through the intercession of saint jude that we grow stronger in unity in communion as we prepare for the synod may we truly be disciples of jesus wanting to further god's kingdom wanting to build up the church may saint jude our patron intercede for us kindly stand for the prayer of the faithful during this with a strong faith in our hearts we lift all the needs of the devotees our response will be lord help our unbelief and show us your mercy together lord, lord help our unbelief and show us your mercy for the church currently rocked by the various sins of the leaders we ask the merciful god to have mercy and pardon we pray to the lord lord, lord help, help our unbelief and show us your mercy for those in government and public offices established for the smooth functioning of the land but due to greed of power and fame have failed in their responsibilities toward the people and lost their trust we pray to the lord lord, lord help, help our unbelief and show us your mercy for survivors of abuse violence and misfortunes bless all those who suffer at the hands of others and by your cleansing love bring healing and strength so that with justice received they may rejoice again we pray to the lord lord help our unbelief and show us your mercy for terminally ill and on death bed help us to face bravely the negative aspect of this human life so that as we slowly await the end we may hope for a new life with jesus christ in our heavenly abode we pray to the lord lord help our unbelief and show us your mercy for all devotees that whatever life holds as baptized christians and all who believe in jesus christ may continue walking the way of the cross as our master jesus did we pray to the lord lord, lord help, help our unbelief and show us your mercy god our father thank you for hearing our pleas as we know that you we are on a pilgrimage in this life which is passing which will lead us to our heavenly home we ask this through christ our lord amen, amen. please Please note the offertory collection made now is for the general upkeep and maintenance of this church and shrine. God bless your generosity. Oh
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we venerate the perpetual glory of the holy apostles Simon and Jude, O Lord, we ask that you receive our prayers and lead us to worthy celebration of the sacred mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with, your, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Jude and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and, power and the glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, worthy that, you that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed.
Kindly stand for the prayer after communion. Having received this sacrament, O Lord, we humbly implore you in the Holy Spirit that what we do to honor the glorious passion of the apostles Simon and Jude may keep us ever in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's in prayer for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Kindly be seated. Announcements. Mass offerings can be dropped in the box near the altar. The box intentions will be commonly offered at all masses each day. Donations in cash or check can also be dropped in the drop box directly. Checks can be drawn in favor of Our Lady of Fatima Church. Those who would like a receipt for donations may contact Father Byron in the sacristy. Please contact the ushers for any assistance. A very happy feast to all our devotees of St. Jude. We have had a spiritual uplifting nine-day novena and we thank all our devotees both online and those who could make it. May St. Jude always intercede for us. Please note that the general schedule of Masses in our parish will be as follows. Weekdays, 6.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. in English. Sundays, 7.30 a.m. in Marathi, 9.15 a.m. in English and 6 p.m. in English. In order to encourage all our people, especially the young, to come back to the church, we will be gradually phasing out online services of our parish so that the younger generation would not use the online services as an option for not coming to church. Therefore, Sunday 7th November will be the last day for the live online masses in our parish. Only on certain special occasions and feasts we will have the online streaming. 
However, we will continue live online streaming of Mass on Thursday for the benefit of our St. Jude devotees staying far and wide and in different countries. The 5.30 p.m. St. Jude Mass and Navina will be streamed every Thursday until further notice. Monday, 1st November is the Solemnity All Saints Day. We ask the intercession of all the communion of saints. Mass timings as usual, 6.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. Tuesday is All Souls Day. We remember the faithful departed. The box intentions for All Souls Day Masses is placed in the church. You can drop your intentions and make your offering into the box marked for this purpose. At the Masses on 2nd November All Souls Day, the intentions will be commonly offered for all the faithful departed. On All Souls Day, as there are no masses at the Shuri Cemetery, we will have an additional ma we will have additional masses in the parish on that day. Following are the mass timings: 6:30 a.m. and 7 a.m., 5:30 p.m. and 7 p.m. From this month onwards. Every first Friday of the month, we will have a prayer tower that is healing, anointing and adoration service from 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. conducted by Father Byron Mendonca and the team members from the Fellowship of the Burning Bush. All are encouraged to attend and receive the Lord's anointing and blessing. Please inform one another. We thank you for the following collections. Offertory collection during the 90 Novena amounted to Rs. 88,260. St. Jude box collection during the 9 day Novena amounted to Rs. 1,34,510. God bless us all and happy feast. My dear devotees of St. Jude, today we have a double celebration. It's our feast of St. Jude, our patron, and also one of our online, one of our con-celebrants, Father Sandeep Koshav, has authored a book on the credo, the I believe in Marathi. And so we are very happy today, since we have Bishop John Rodericks, to uh, release this book. Uh, and uh, for those who would like a copy, or would like to give it to or gift it to someone or, or your friends or the Marathi speaking community make, can contact the Lady Sodality stall for the book that will be available there. It is priced at 80 rupees but today it's a, for all of us it's at uh, rupees 50. So I would like to invite and Bishop John Rodericks and Father Sandeep uh, that to do the honors for the release of this book. I am happy to release this book written by Father Sandeep Capuchin on the faith. It's titled, Me Shraddha Thevito, Father Sandeep Koshav Capuchin. Congratulations to you, Father Sandeep. God bless you.
Father Sandeep will share a little bit about this book. So it gives me immense pleasure to release my first book on Credo, I Believe. Certain questions that had come from people and uh, my, it began when I was in Panvel with Father Bairin. Some thoughts, some inspiration and I began to write on Credo. And now here I am I in Our Lady of Fatima Church Shivri releasing this my first book based on I Believe in Credo. I take this opportunity to thank God for uh, giving me this chance to pen down some thoughts and also I want to be very grateful to the people who have been source of inspiration, those who have helped me to come up with language uh, going ahead with this book. I thank my own Bishop, Bishop Ambrose of Aurangabad. I thank Bishop John for releasing this book on this occasion. I also take this opportunity to thank Father Robert de Souza and Father Albert Pegado who helped me to script the language. I thank Father Byron and Father Ronnie for the platform for the release of book. And I also thank all my priest friend, Father Ramesh, Father Isaac, Father Albert, Father Kishore and Father Godfrey for their backup and their support. I also thank my mom and dad who are present here. And I ask Bishop to hand over a copy of book to my mom and dad on behalf of me. And thank you so much. May all those who read this book, may they find inspiration through the power of the Holy Spirit. It has been a real marathon for us. We had nine days of the Fatima feast and nine days of St. Jude. Finally, the curtains close, but not for long. Every Thursday, the devotees keep coming to our shrine and ask St. Jude's intercession. I want to thank, in a very special way, all those who have been very uh, helpful to us. So, First, to God Almighty for all the work that we have done is because we give praise to God Almighty. He gives us a strength and without him we can do nothing. The fact that we are being blessed to carry on the work is because of God's blessing on all of us. So we thank God Almighty for allowing us. The government exactly opened the churches just on the eve of our novena to Our Lady of Fatima. So it is providence that we could meet physically and you know have the services. I want to thank Father Ronald, my assistant and principal of the school, for his support, Father Sandeep, who was here to help out for the Fatima Marathi services, and also for the St. Jude Novena. He was here with us. We thank both the fathers for their assistance all through these 18, 19, 20 days, actually. For all our preachers who helped us spiritually, each day we had a wonderful reflection on various topics. This year we chose on the COVID pandemic because many people were going through a lot of suffering, struggle in different walks of life. And so we chose uh, themes based on those who are suffering and asking the intercession of St. Jude to help us. We thank all our preachers for their wonderful reflection that helped us and fed us with spiritual food. For the technical team, Joe and Justin for being there, especially for those who cannot make it, the online services, and they have been willingly coming without any problem being there every time we need the service. So thank you, Justin, thank you, Joe, for being there always, especially for the online services, so that those who cannot make it can also watch and pray together. So the musicians and cantors for helping us and enhance, enhancing our liturgy because without singing, it doesn't really make us joyful. But the singing adds the effect. Whoever sings once, they say praise twice. St. Augustine says it. So let us thank God for the musicians who dedicated themselves and the cantors who have been with us during these many days. 
The Marathi choir, who also been part of the Marathi services, also offered their services during these days. So thanks to the Marathi choir for enhancing the liturgy of the Marathi masses. For Pascal and Michael for all their services, especially in the emergencies, they have been there. Um, Michael, especially in the emergency, we didn't have someone to help us, us in the sacristy. And Pascal for any other electrical emergencies. Thank you, Pascal and Michael. The altar service for being always there all the nine days they were present. So we had altar service all the, all the days of the Novena. God bless you all in a very special way for helping us at the altar. For the ushers, for the dedicated service, and I want to point out very specifically because when we opened the church, we needed the ushers to, in a way, have a different kind of, of, uh, of reaching out, special order and discipline, and having following the COVID protocols because the government also puts restrictions. And uh, they've been trained uh, to do it in a very special way. And also the fumigation and the sanitization after every service, after every mass. So thank you, Melvin, and your team for being there not only for the evening masses, but right from the morning, early morning masses, continuously giving. May God bless you and bless the work of your hands. And may you all continue to receive the blessings of the Lord in, in your home and families. The liturgy team that planned all the liturgy, the entire planning of all the nine-day novena, we ask, we ask God to bless them too for their dedicated services. For all our donors and well-wishers who have been our support and helping us all through to maintain and keep upkeep of this church and shrine, all the blessings that you have received, because you have received blessings in a way, you are sharing these blessings with us. God bless you always. For all the devotees for their cooperation, as I mentioned, this time it was a different kind of a celebration. We couldn't have the stalls, we couldn't have the refreshments as we normally would in other years. This year it is just the services and then we move out because we can't overcrowd or we can't uh, gather together. So having followed all these, I want to thank you in a very special, for your cooperation. Thank God I would say we could at least spiritually pray these nine days, maybe the other things are accidentals, but the essentials were to be spiritually closer to the Lord through the Novena services and prayers, and that we could do it physically as well as online. So we are grateful to the Lord for giving us this opportunity and also for cooperating in so many ways with the ushers, with the new way of moving uh, in order uh, as per the requirement. So God bless all of you for so willingly being patient and cooperating. All the silent workers who also have done a lot behind the scenes, they have requested for anonymity. They didn't want the names to be called out. But I also want to thank these silent workers. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for always being there and especially for giving your services so willingly. I want to also thank the con celebrants over here present. Today we had a, a real feast. Also at the altar, we have so many con celebrants. We have Father Albert, Father Ramesh, Father Isaac, Father Kishore, Father Godfrey, Father Sandeep, Father Ronnie, and uh, Bishop John as the main celebrant. I want to thank Bishop John also in a very special way for accepting to be the main celebrant and also for sharing the reflection on St. Jude. Uh, thank you, Bishop, on behalf of the entire, all the devotees of St. Jude from all the different parishes that come. Thank you so much for being with us and celebrating the Holy Mass, Holy Eucharist, and for giving us your blessing. Thank you all the fathers, the concelebrants who've come to share in this joy, uh, to share in our joy also of the feast, to share in the joy also of, the, of Father Sandeep's book. We hope that... Father Sandeep may have a second book soon and we all will be gathered again for another celebration. We will now have the, uh, the prayer, no, we, uh, prayer to St. Jude. We used to have the relic being used for veneration, but because of the COVID protocol, we cannot have the veneration personally from each one. So uh, Bishop John will... Uh, they have the novena, no, prayer service, the prayer, and a prayer for the sick, 
and he will give a general blessing with this relic to all of us from the altar itself. And then we will uh, have the communion outside or to my left. You, you would follow the same procedure, row by row, we would move, we venerate the statue of St. Jude and then we come out. You will also receive a prayer card which you can take from the volunteers on St. Jude, which uh, after you receive communion outside, you can take the prayer card along with you. We will pray for the petitions now, which are placed in the, in the basket and in the boxes here. I invite you to lift up to the Lord all these petitions that we have come and put with faith, believing in our hearts. As the Lord said to all those who came to Him, your faith has saved you, your faith has healed you. And Lord Jesus, we ask you at this moment, as you say to each one of us the same words, your faith has saved you, your faith has healed you. Let us hear these words of the Lord with faith in our hearts, saying it to each one of us. All our prayers, all our petitions, all our sufferings, cries and pain, the Lord has heard whatever we have written, the Lord is hearing us. He is compassionate, full of love. And through the intercession of his holy apostle Saint Jude, we ask Saint Jude to take these petitions and prayers to the feet of the Divine Master, our Lord Jesus Christ. And through his prayers and intercession, may the Lord grant our petition. May the Lord grant our prayer. May the Lord hear our cry. May the Lord hear our prayers. Even if we have not written pet the petitions here, the Lord knows the cries of our hearts. Offer it to Jesus. With the intercession of St. Jude, we ask the Lord to hear our prayer. And if it is your will, Lord, grant these petitions and prayers of your devotees. And so we sing together, hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer. With faith, let us sing once again. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear We make all these prayers to Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now have the prayer to St. Jude, the blessing with the relic, and then we prepare for Holy Communion. Prayer to St. Jude, Most, Most Holy, Holy Apostle St. Jude, Faithful Servant and Friend of Jesus, The name of the traitor who delivered the beloved Master into the hands of his enemies has caused you to be forgotten by many. But the Church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of hopeless cases, of things despaired of. Pray for me who am so miserable, Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help is almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and succor of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations and sufferings and that I may glorify God with you and all the elect throughout eternity. I promise you, O blessed Saint Jude, to be ever mindful of great favours and will never cease to honour you as my special and powerful patron and to do all in my power to encourage devotion to you. Amen. Prayer for the sick. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall get well. Mark 16, 18. Grant, Almighty and Eternal God, everlasting health to those who believe. Hear us for the sick, for whom we implore the aid of your tender mercy, that being restored to bodily health, they may give thanks to you in your church 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Jesus, the Son of Mary, the Lord and Redeemer of the world, through the merits and intercession of his holy apostle, St. Jude, show us favor and mercy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. St. Jude, pray, pray for, for us, us and, and all, all those who invoke your aid. Your aid. As we prepare for Holy Communion, thank you, Lord, for your body and blood that we now will receive. Thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for the food that you give us that we will never be hungry again. Help us to always walk the right path. Protect us, sanctify us, purify us, wash us, cleanse us. Come Lord into my heart. I yearn for you. I desire you. Help me to receive you with reverence. Believing that you, the Son of God, comes to my heart, unworthy as I am, with no merit of my own. But yet you come to anoint me, to sanctify me, and to fill me with your presence, that I may carry your presence wherever I go. Help me to walk always the right path. Circle me with a ring of protection from all evil, from all harm, from all dangers, from all accidents and diseases, and protect us all from this pandemic. I welcome you, Lord, now into my heart. Amen. Wait. 
Oh